Welcome. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you to worship here with the community of the Second Baptist Church of Suffield, Connecticut, on this first Sunday after the Epiphany. We are so glad that you have decided to make worship with us part of your rhythm for your week. Wherever you find yourself in your walk with faith this day, please know that you can find welcome and love with this faith community. As we begin today, I want to recognize and thank our participants in today's service. Today, we'll be joined by some special singers who will be leading our hymns today, Molly Drenzik, Tina Berrien, and Larry Peters. Also, Jean Aldrich Jones will be playing the piano and the organ today, and Deacon da David Jones is leading us with his gifts of videography. Thank you. I am the, Ra I am the Reverend Dr. Rachel Lawrence, and I am acting pastor of this congregation. If you are just getting to know Second Baptist Church, I invite you to visit our website where you can learn more about the many missions and ministries we have happening throughout the week, even during this COVID season. While you are there, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email updates. The address for our website is www.secondbaptistsuffield.org. That's all one word. And you can also stop by and help contribute to the many ministries by sharing a contribution through our PayPal site, which is linked on the website, or by mailing one directly to the collector at 100 North Main Street, Suffield, Connecticut, 06078. When considering your gifts, I invite you to remember the many blessings that Jesus has shared in your life, to think about your commitment to a place like Second Baptist Church as your spiritual home, and to pray about your hopes and your dreams for this congregation and your community, and then share in a way that reflects what church and mission means in your life. Thank you. Now shall we enter into this time of worship through listening to our prelude. Thank you, Jean.
Will you join me now in the call to worship? The response will be found printed at the bottom of your screen. God began by creating heaven and earth. The spirit breathes the world into order. Then God called forth light to shine on creation. God's word continues to shine forth as light in this world. God called the light and the dark good the first day. God's love follows us all the days of our lives. Amen. I invite you now to join us in singing our opening hymn, We Sing Your Mighty Power, O God. join with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today will be brought to you by Deacon David Jones. Thank you, Dave. Today's first reading comes from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next, we will have an anthem, Ubi Caritas, and this will be sung by the SBC singers. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 
Time for Children, brought to us by our incomparable Sue Schneller, our Director of Christian Education. Thank you, Sue. Good morning. So last week, I don't know if you listened, but I told you we were in for a big surprise. Well, as you can see, I'm not in my cabin. Some very good friends of ours offered us the use of their condo. At first, Ray and I were like, oh, no, no, we can't. We just can't. And then we were like, well, maybe we can. And they're like, well, there's internet, Wi-Fi, and cell phone service. And then we were like, okay, we're going to do it. So we woke up this morning, and I was thinking about the song that we sang. We sing the power of God. And I just want to show you something. Come with me. Wow. Just take a look at that. The words of the song just really are right there for us to see. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars are there. How awesome it is to be able to see the power of God, hear the power of God. You know that every sunrise is a new beginning. When you're tired, when you're sad, you get to start new every day. I'm very grateful to be able to start my day here. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the wondrous display. Wherever my eyes look, I see such power and grace and glory. From the path I take to the sky I gaze upon, I can see you and feel you. You are ever present and I am so grateful. Isn't it wonderful to be able to see God's power, hear God's power, and share God's power with others? Well, bye for now. I'll see you next week. God is great. Bye-bye. As we enter into a time of prayer this morning, I invite you to remember some of the prayer requests we've received throughout the week. Let us keep George Bernier and his family in prayer 
as his daughter Lori has passed away. Please keep my father, the Reverend Richard Lawrence, in your prayers this week as he is in hospice care in the Levitt home in Longmeadow. Peter and Natalie Doss are requesting prayers for Peter's cousin, Peter Doss, who is in hospice care in the Netherlands, as well as for his family as they come to the end of what has been a difficult journey. Also, their former daughter-in-law, Amy, lost their, her husband, Peter Panagako, this week after an illness. In their Christmas letter, Chris and June Hodges indicated that they have family members who are dealing with COVID. Let's keep them in their, our prayers this week. And I want to offer prayers of gratitude that Luther Killam has recovered from COVID and is back in his home at the, at, at the Suffield home. Let's keep all who are suffering with the illnesses in our prayers this week around the world as they deal with what has indeed become a strange and unpredictable illness. Also, I invite you to lift up our nation in prayer following the events of this week as we have really demonstrated that we are in need of God's healing and peace as a people. Will you join me in a moment of silent prayer? Lord God, we remember this day how you revealed your son in the waters of the Jordan. We remember how the power of the Holy Spirit descended from the skies, bringing us the joy of the good news for all people. We come before you this day knowing that through Jesus, we are your children, made one in your spirit. In this we rejoice, knowing that when all else fails, you are with us in our good days and our bad in our beginnings and in our ends. We thank you for the gifts your Holy Spirit showers us with through our whole lives. We pray this day for our brothers, sisters, and siblings around the world who are suffering from illnesses, COVID, heart disease, dementia, cancer, among others. Be with them, Lord. May the warmth of your healing presence surround them, and may your wisdom guide their caretakers. We ask for your loving presence to encircle those who mourn, remembering their loved ones and wishing for their presence. We also ask this day for your guidance, Lord, guidance as a church, as a community, as people living in a nation sometimes divided. Give us guidance that we may truly serve as your hands and feet in this world. Show us the ways in which we can do the most good with the time we have to shape your world for the better, to make this a more welcoming, loving, and whole place for all your children. Be with us, we pray. Keep our spirits holy and guided by your presence so that we may show the world the healing power of the word made flesh through acts of love in your name. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Mark. Hear chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance 
for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you in water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The words of our Lord, thanks be to God. You may have noticed that our call to worship this morning started with the very beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and continued through the first day. And in today's gospel lesson, we're listening to the story of another beginning. This beginning story as we remember the baptism of the Lord on this day, follows very closely in the liturgical year to the beginning of Jesus's birth in Jerusalem. As part of remembering that story, we often hear the opening verses from John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Beginnings are a big part of our story as humans, as Christians, in our ways of knowing who we are. And for Mark, Jesus' story begins with John the Baptist in the wilderness. Rather than visiting with the angels, the shepherd, or the magis, Mark introduces us to Jesus through his cousin, the voice in the wilderness crying, prepare the way of the Lord, orienting Jesus' story in Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 40. Verse 3, Jesus being baptized by John was a notable enough event that all of the synoptic gospel writers decided to include it. Perhaps it's because it's a little odd, a little difficult to explain, and yet such a deeply rooted foundation of the Christian tradition. Did you just find yourself asking why I might say the story is a little odd? Well, the oddness is rooted in who it is that we believe Jesus to be. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Word incarnate. Christians all around the globe uh, tend to agree that Jesus was blameless, sinless, 
someone who was as right with God as possibly could be. And yet, he comes to his cousin, his cousin who is preaching, repent, turn away from your sins, and start a new life. He comes to that message to be baptized, to undergo a religious observation rooted in forgiveness of sin and change of heart. Did Jesus really have anything that needed to be changed? After all, John himself was puzzled by this request. I should be baptized by you, he says in some versions of the gospel. He protests to his cousin. And yet, here it is, front and center, as the opening of Mark's gospel. A beginning. Of course, Jesus explains that John's baptism was different, with water, that the baptism to come was from the Holy Spirit. John then agrees, submerses his cousin into the muddy waters of the Jordan, and the Holy Spirit descends from the heavens as a dove recognizing Jesus as God's son. You are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. With this beginning, Jesus's ministry was set into motion, a ministry to the world transformed by the Holy Spirit. Now, we living in the U.S. love a good origin story. We love to celebrate the beginnings of things. For example, we celebrate birthdays. We mark anniversaries. We have significant holidays around major events like the 4th of July, the beginning of the country. We tell and retell our origin stories as a nation, as families, as the church, and more. Our beginnings do tell us something about who it is we are. And yet, when we celebrate and recognize our beginnings, how often is it that what we're really celebrating is all of the things that happen after the beginning of the story. The birth, after all, is the start of a life. It's the everyday living of that life that makes the birthday remarkable. A wedding is the start of a marriage. And as the Reverend Brett Younger points out, it's the living of that marriage that really tells the story and develops meaning. Baptism, he continues, like all beginnings, find their meaning after the event. Starting by itself is of little consequence. So as we remember Jesus' baptism today, what we're really remembering and celebrating is Jesus' life, a life which transforms human value and dignity, uplifts the poor and the sick and the downtrodden. We celebrate a life that cares deeply for the least of these a life that calls us to, from across the ages, each and every one of us, to live as siblings, beloved children of God, affirmed in our own baptisms. Jesus' baptism by John was the beginning of baptism as we know it. 
Rather than an act of repentance, the Holy Spirit makes baptism an act of connection through God's grace and mercy. Like communion, Jesus' baptism is how we are connected by and through our Lord. Children of a merciful and forgiving God. This beginning, which we read about today, is our beginning. Something worth celebrating year after year. Since we are so deeply connected through the love of Christ and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let's reflect on some of our beginnings that spring from here. 1805, the birth of this congregation. 1810, the hiring of the first pastor of this congregation. 1964, the start of the Enfield Church. January 2020, when the churches, the two churches, decided to try joining forces to start something else yet new, using our many gifts from the Holy Spirit together. These dates are significant because of the many things that happened after them. People baptized, connected to the long line of witnesses that came after Christ. Children taught of God's love over the ages. The needs of people met in our local communities and around the world through missions inspired by the Holy Spirit. From these beginnings, we're connected to do the work of God together, bringing meaning to the beginnings. And think about the many gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been poured out in your life through your significant beginnings, your birth, your baptism. How have you felt the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, shaping your journey, leading you on paths of righteousness? How has that decision, rather whether it was made by you in your youth, or made by your parents as a sign of their commitment to raising you in faith? How has your baptism shaped and guided your life? Where has that beginning through your of your faith, through your baptism, how has that worked to lead you and to show the world Christ's love through you? How does this affirm your connection as a beloved child of God? What a gift these simple beginnings bring to this world. Will you pray with me? Lord, you call us to the river with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gifts you have shared with us through our kinship, letting us know that we share in God's love with you. May the humble beginning of our baptism be a beacon to God, as your life and sacrifice was for us, so that the whole world may live as beloved children, pleasing in your sight. Let the waters of our baptism shared with you refresh and sustain us our whole life through. In your sacred name we pray. Amen. I now invite you to join us in singing our closing hymn, 
Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. May you go in peace this day out into the world with an open heart and open mind, ready to receive the Holy Spirit and let it guide you on your way. Amen.